Hi there, it's Stanton here from Ogo Trading. Tonight we are going to be talking about MT5 EA optimization and how to do it the right way. So let's get straight into it. Okay, so essentially I have two rules for um, optimization. First rule is test the strategy. As you can see, I'm using my this will explain the first rule quite nicely. Um, I'm going to use my multifarious EA for Bybit. And as you can see, I've got a lot of indicators or a lot of settings that can be optimized. Um, you know, so what a lot of new people do or when they come into MKR5, they'll check everything, not knowing what it does, and try and basically get lucky finding optimization. That is the worst thing you could do when optimizing. So the first rule is test a strategy. So what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to run a moving average RSI strategy. So I know what strategy I want to test. I know the parameters that I want to test. It also limits the amount of inputs that I need to make when testing the strategy. Okay, and the next rule, which is also very important, is understanding your step. So I know I'm going to be testing on BTC USD. I know that the minimum stop level is 100 or 50 in this case, but I'm going to do steps of 100. And I know what the lot size is. So the minimum lot size is 0 0.01. So I'm going to test it for the minimum lot size and you know for the for 100 pip stop loss. Okay, so let's just check it out. So I'm going to be doing a moving average RSI strategy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to test if closing the opposite um, position works. So in, in, for instance, if I'm in a buy and a sell trade comes up, it will close the buy and go into the sell trade. Then I'm going to test the stop loss, use trailing stop and the trailing stops. I always use these to optimize to see what is the best type of trailing stop or stop loss or take profit to use. And now I'm going to go into the indicator strategy. So now I know that I want to use the 200 day moving average and I want to use the trend. So basically what that's testing for is if the current price is above the 200 day moving average, we'll look for buy positions. If it's below the 200 day moving average, we'll look for sell positions. That's essentially what I'm testing. I'm going to keep it at 200 day. I'm going to use the exponential moving average and I'm going to keep everything the way it is. Uh, the only thing I'm going to optimize here for the moving average is the time frame. So for instance, I'm running this now. I'm going to run the back test on the one hour chart. So maybe, you know, if the moving average is on the five hour chart or daily chart, it might get better results. That's what we'll be able to see. And now for the RSI settings, I'm going to use I'm going to use the RSI indicator. So I'm not going to check that on and off. I know I'm going to use that indicator. And I'm going to reverse the signal. So what that means is I'm looking for more of a momentum strategy. So what's going to happen is, so if the 200-day moving average or the current price is above the 200-day moving average and the price breaks through the upper level of the RSI, I'll show you in the back test what I mean by that if you don't understand RSI. You have an up level and you have a down level. Um, usually what happens if you go below the down level, you look for a buy position. If you go above the the upper level you look for a sell position but in this case I'm going to do the opposite if it, if it goes above the buy level level or the upper level that means the momentum is strong to the upside I'm going to look for a continuation buy so um, the only things I'm going to change here is the averaging period so you know you have normally the two period the one period the the standard the 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 um, default setting for RSI is not in the 14 period RSI but I'm going to test it from the 2 I'm going to go up in steps of 1 and I'm going to go up to 20 my RSI up level which is the upper band or the upper level of the RSI I'm going to start at 60 I'm going to go in steps of 5 and I'm going to go up to 100 the down level I'm going to start at 5 I'm going to go up in steps of 5 and I'm going to go up to 40 so what that means is that any optimization between, uh, in this case, 60 and 100 is my buy zone. Any optimization between 5 and 40 is my sell zone. And also, I'm going to just check the RSI time frame.
to see which is the best time frame to use the RSI. And I'm not going to do anything else. So I'm only going to optimize for that strategy. So let's run the optimization and we're going to start. And we could check our optimization results. A uh, little trick when you're checking out your optimization, you can go into filters, you can remove zero trades, you can remove losses, and you can also filter for where your drawdown is greater than 50%. Okay, so already we're getting some decent optimization results, so we're just going to let it run. I'm not going to talk too much because it seems to be clipping when I'm running optimization results and recording. So we're just going to let this run through and we'll just keep clicking and viewing the optimization results. Already we've seen some decent results here. Drawdown at 8%, profit of $588 from a $10 buy-in. But we'll see if we get anything better than that. So I'm not going to click too much, we're just going to let this run. And, and while it's running, we could just continue talking about optimization. So the the biggest mistake you can make in optimizing is clicking everything and hoping for the best. But this is a good, good result. Close opposite. Trailing step, trailing stop, 97, 98. Yeah, it's a good opposite. So it's fine. 60 and 35 is decent. Decent figures. Okay, so I'm going to stop the, the back test. I think we've got a decent enough, well, it's almost finished, probably like a couple of minutes left. Let's just see if we've got anything better than that. Um, no, it looks like this is the best. So we just wait for it to finish. Should be finishing pretty soon. Wow, well, it's just getting more and more runs. Sorry, I'm just being quiet, but I'm just waiting for this to finish now. I think that's enough runs we've got. I mean, this, these are all basically the same, so let's just stop this. Okay, so we found a, a decent enough strategy. Good profit, $1,323. Drawdown only 7%. Um, now another little tip that you can do is that now you've run this optimization for these settings you've got a lot of settings that you could you could play with you could try out um, so what i normally do then is you'll save you'll export your optimization cache and just overwrite that one um, you export it so now you don't need to run this back test again you could just reload it in future and you could just run those optimizations. So now what you want to do, if you want to run a particular optimization, you just double click it. And that's going to run it into your, and that's a pretty decent graph. Very cool, quite like that, that result. So now, because we like that result, we can now save this set file. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to click save. I'm going to go into my set files. Um, I can overwrite this. And now what I do when I create my set files, I put the instrument, the trading strategy, and then the time frame. So I know when I load this again, what strategy it is, what time frame it's going to be running on. And I put that all into the name of the set file. So I know exactly what chart to put it on etc etc all right so that is optimization so i hope you guys enjoyed the video please like please follow um, check the links below